guys, stop everything. You just downloaded Clip Studio and you absolutely need a new workspace. So let's jump into it. All right, guys, let's start. So today we are going to learn how to build your personal workspace. This is the final result. It's my own uh, workspace, something that I use every day. And if you are too lazy to build your own, uh, you can always download mine in the description. But I assure you that it's really, really important for you to build your own workspace. So let's start. So guys, just to let you know, I didn't install today Clip Studio, but I just click on reset to default button. This is the version that I'm using currently is 1.10.1. All right. Very, very important thing that you have to do right now. You can go here and click here and you'll see there is the shortcut wrote on the right. And as you can see, it's going to open this, go to interface and check the colors because guys, you don't want to kill your eyes. So you don't want the light color. And if you like the light color and you can't live without it, well, guys, adjust the luminosity because it's really, really important that you are going to have like a perfect side. So please use the dark color, dark color, middle, a little bit lower is perfect. I love this kind of gray. So for me, it's all right like this now. I have something really serious to tell you right now. Please click that subscribe button. Come on, you can do it. I believe in you. Also the like button. Come on. Let's start with something serious. So what I'm going to do is to grab the old column that I can find here, click in here with the left button. You can see that it's going to detach and I'm going to bring the old column here. All right. Why? Well, mainly because I'm right handed and when I rest my arm, I want it to be the closer to the tool section. So keep in mind that if you are left handed, maybe you want to mirror this kind of view. I want to give you a general idea on how this works. So basically when you detach this bar from here, uh, the, the main thing that you have to understand is that you can shrink that bar as much as you want. You can collapse that bar in something more minimal and you can completely collapse the bar. All right. You have to use your space in a really wise way. If you click in this empty gray bar, you are going to grab the whole column. And if you click on this part, you're going to grab grab just a single piece of the of the column. And in this case is the sub tool. Let's start from there. Started with a lot, a lot of brushes. You can find plenty in Clip Studio assets. This is the brush bar is going to appear to you when you press B or this button. B is the shortcut for the brush. So if you press on B or pencil, you'll see different brushes. I'm not going to move this bar because I like it. And, but you still can manipulate this bar. As you can see, if you, if you drag, if you drag your piece that you want to move, you can easily move it around and um, right click delete tool and you can eliminate it. So keep in mind that now, I'm going to press the B button, all right? I'm going back to the brushes and I want to show you something really quickly. You can actually move the brushes around and make the priority of the brushes. Right click on the brush, duplicate the brush that you like, all right? Call it in another way. I'll call it pran underscore test, all right? And that brush can be personalized by you. You just have to click here tool property and here and it's going to show you this nice this nice box that is going to show you all the detail of the brush and here 
you can play around and fix the brush as much as you want and test it as much as you want. I'm not going to show you this right now, but if you are interested, please let me know in the section comment and I will do something about this. So let's continue, guys. I'll close this one. So I did this because I want to show you something really interesting. If you drag your brush here in the bar where you have the categories, you can create a new category. Right click on it, settings of subtool group, and you can rename it. So I'm going to call it Pran Category. And here we go, we have our new category. It's going to show here. And this is the category where you are going to store all of your brushes. Hopefully, guys, remember, when you're going to create your own brush, you have to select the brush and put it in another category. All right, let's move on. So if you accidentally create something, you can always delete stuff. So the three lines that you can see here, you're going to click on that, delete subtool, and the category is going to disappear once it's empty. So if you create three brushes, you have to delete three brushes. Clip Studio doesn't have an option to select multiple brushes to be deleted. So guys, do not create 1000 brushes and then like um, never modify them. That's totally, yeah, that's totally something that I never did right? So <laughs> let's get back to our brushes. We have my uh, Prana Chalky brush. I just want to, to show you something really quickly. When you are going to duplicate this brush, you'll see that you can rename it, all right? But you can also change the icons. If you go here, you can select just the random pastel brush and select the color. The, this is such a high personalization in the software. So guys, play around, make it yours. I highly suggest that, please do it. Let's move on to the tool property box. This is really important when you're using a brush. So opacity, it's really important to have opacity here because you can easily modify it and build some colors. And the size of a brush, of course, I'm going, I'm using my, my mouse and yes, this is what actually I need, honestly. So I don't need more than this and I'll keep it like this. Next to the tool property bar, there is the brush size bar. Honestly, I don't need this. So I'm going to grab the tab, put it outside of my category and click on X. It's going to disappear. Now, if you accidentally delete something, just remember that you can always click on window. And here, if you browse, you'll find there is brush size. In this case, we are talking about Pram Chalky brush because that is what is selected. Click on it and it's going to appear again. Now, I just want to show you something. The color wheel has crazy amount of tabs next to it. Now, I have to be honest, I rarely use all of this. So I'm going to get rid of this stuff really quickly. So what I'm going to keep is color wheel and color history. Guys, it's really important to have color history because you are going to pick the color from the canvas or from, from your photo references and you want that colors handy. This bar is for the materials, all right? I'll show you quickly what is going on here. This is my quick access bar. These are my uh, on-screen shortcuts. I love it because like this, I can have all of my brushes and all of my eraser all together in my quick bar. Like that, I can really understand what is going on really easily. So I'll keep it like this. We have materials here, all right? The materials are the resources that Clip Studio gives you to facilitate your work. So because I not often use this section, I'm going to shrink it like this and it's going to give you the preview of the folders that there are in it. 
and this one is going to shrink completely the section. To be honest, I would love to have it on the right and shrink it and shrink it and here we go. Now we have a really slim column that is not going to bother us, but if we need it, we just have to click on it and it's going to show it again. So my first column is the uh, quick axis. The second column is the one that I, where I have my brushes and my colors. And the third one is the more technical stuff. History. History is really important for me, so I'm going to put it next to Navigator. As you can see, there is a, a vertical red bar here. I'm going to put it here. We'll talk about this later. And uh, also for the auto actions, I want to keep it here. What I'm going to do in the layers is to grab the layer property and put it here. Search layers and put it here. Animation cell, honestly, I don't need it. And now that we are talking about it, I don't need even this one because this one in the is the timeline and I'm not going to do any animation. So let's get rid of that too. We were in the layer section. Next to the layer, we have the layer properties. Something that I don't usually use, but it's, it's useful because it's going to create some kind of nice shortcuts. So guys, I want to show you how you can use the search layer. So for example, if you're going to press Ctrl G, you're going to create a folder. And here, if you filter only for folders, all right? you can see that it's going to show you only the folders and like these you can scroll really easily in your 2000 layers that you're going to create for sure and I'm really proud of you that you're keeping your workspace organized and your layer organized. <laughs> so I don't usually use this honestly so I'm going to get rid of this. What about the layer property? I usually use the layer property to create my sketch layers. Uh, it's really handy when you're working on sketches and do line art. So guys, pretty much done. We just need to check quickly some uh, stuff here on the top. So navigator. So for me, it's really important to have the navigator on the top right, because like this, I can check my canvas really, really easily. And uh, it can give me an idea from distance on how my composition is working. So I'll keep it there. Also, there are some useful stuff that you can do, like flipping the canvas or, uh, horizontally, vertically, zoom in, zoom out, rotate, and center again, all right, and this kind of stuff. Next, history. Uh, I like I like to have my history at hand because I can do stuff like this, and I can check what's my result uh, in like several distant uh, iteration. Auto actions. You can create or you can download your auto actions. You are going to do a series of action while recording and the software magically is going to recreate that, that steps for you automatically every time you press play. I'll show you how it works. So basically guys, here I have my uh, small emote that I'm using on my Twitch channel. And if I'm going to press on auto actions, it's going to create for me a um, dark layer and a white layer. And this is a really uh, quick way for me to do a standard outline for my emotes when I want to showcase them. All right, let's move on. Here we have the sub view. Oh my gosh, the sub view is something that I discovered really recently. And basically here you can upload one of your images. So I'm going to click this import and I'm going to click on this image. All right. And right now I have this as a reference and I can use it pretty much wherever I want. I'll keep it here, but I can actually move it here and create, create a, a new canvas 
that I'm going to use it as a reference and you can check the colors, you can have some inspiration here, you can do pretty much whatever you want without being like um, stuck with a new file. And then we have the item bank. Now, in the item bank you can have stuff like this. So basically, I can rename this as Signature and I can put my signature or my watermark directly on my canvas and it's going to be like really really handy because like now I can say alright, this is my artwork from today and I'm going to save this file like this. And also we have informations, information about your canvas, for example, if you're going to do a selection, you are going to see how big it is. And yes, this is pretty much my setup, guys. I, I like to have my navigator a little bit smaller and my layers are not that many, so this kind of dimension is good for me. I just want to suggest you, if you use a lot of your layers, you can do something like this and have your layers here or even detach it, so use it, use it, personalize it and I want to see what you came out with and if you find this informative. So the very last thing that I want to say to you is about uh, how to save your workspace. So go in Window workspace and click on register workspace here you are going to call it test ws workspace all right and here is going to say the information below will be saved in the workspace palette position info view status shortcut settings common palette layout and preferences unit settings all right i'm going to save this and what I'm going to do is to register the workspace as material. Doing like this, I'm going to open this tab. And as you can see here, you are going to be able to register your material in the selected folder that you want. Apply some tags like Pranessa. All right. And you can say, OK, I want to save this. Then you can go in your materials here and you will see there is this new test WS material that you can quickly, i show you, I'm going to reset this to default and I'll show you what you can do. You can grab this and put it this bad boy here and here we go now you have your workspace back as it was so remember always to save your workspace and have it stored in your pc and also uh, you can upload your workspace in cloud this is really really important so go here open clip studio you're going to have this this is my uh, Clip Studio. This is what you have when you start Clip Studio by clicking on the icon. Clicking on Paint, you can start your painting session and you can access to your canvas. These are my previous artworks, as you can see. I can scroll and click on More to see what I was working on this week. And very, very important, you can go in Clip Studio Assets and download something that you like from this very huge catalog. Also, I want to show you the very last thing. When you synchronize your account here, then you have access to 10 gigabyte of cloud space where you can store all your settings and materials and brushes in the cloud. So you have to click on cloud settings and synchronize your stuff save the settings, go back and eventually if you're going to disinstall and reinstall the software or install the software in another uh, computer or tablet, you can uh, click on restore app settings. You're going to see that mine was 
updated yesterday so you can restore up settings and everything back on what you had so guys this is all for today i hope i give you some kind of general knowledge about this stuff as always if you like what you're seeing please consider to leave a like and uh, subscribe to the channel I promise that I'm going to do more tutorial about Clip Studio. If you have any suggestion for me, please uh, consider to write a comment and uh, give me some hint, some hint about what you don't know, what you want to know and if I can help you. Just a reminder, I'm streaming on Twitch uh, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday to GMT plus one. So if you want to stop by and say hello, you're more than welcome to do it. And thank you so much guys for staying with me. I hope this is going to be helpful for you. And until next time, bye-bye.